I'm Connor Shriver, here again with my brother Zane. Today we're going over lacrosse techniques and specifically defensive midfielder positioning. So the first thing is, depending on which side of the field your defender is on, you typically want to force him to stay on that same side. You don't want him to switching fields or switching sides of the fields. So Zane's the offensive player here. If he crosses over here, you can see that he is on this side of the goal. So if you can imagine a line running straight up through the center of the goal all the way down the field, that's how we'd like to split up the field, to one side or the other. Now, as Zane's on this side, I want to keep him on this side of the field. So the main goal I want to do is be able to force him down the alley or down the side of the goal and to the far corner of the field. So at the approach of a dodge, you want to make sure that you are, you want to square your shoulders to the actual sideline, actually split the field in half. You can actually move up closer to the offensive player. That way, if he starts to dodge, you're or here set up. So if he tries to come over the top, all I have to do is take a step upfield and I'm here having my whole body in position against the offensive player. That way he has to run through my whole body, which is going to be much tougher to do as opposed to if I'm here, all he has to do is run through my stick to get over the top, shift the defense, and have a lot of options as far as offensive and defensive players. So make sure that instead of waiting back on your heels for the defender to, for the offensive player to close the distance to you, get inside a little bit on him, shift your positioning so that your shoulders are square to the sideline. Now we are here and you leave the alley open for him to dodge to because that's where we want him to go. Another reason for squaring your shoulders to the sideline instead of being flat to the goal and, as a, and flat to the offensive player is the angles of approach and how your feet open to running. So if I am flat to Zane or to the offensive player as he comes in to dodge and he dodges down that alley, I'm going to have to turn myself completely around to start running with him. Right? I can't even take any forward motions in that direction until I open my hips and get my body turned that way. Or if I do start moving forward right away, I'm going to be coming at an angle and I'll just be way too far behind him to make a good play. By squaring my shoulders to the sideline here, I'm only a step away. My first step can essentially be forward. So as he makes his move, I'm not only stepping forward into my run, but closing off the distance to the offensive player as well. So by squaring your shoulders to the sideline, you're able to decrease your reaction time make yourself faster in reacting to the offensive player's dodge. I'll also want my stick on the upfield position here. I don't want my stick on the downfield position because that, even if it's only visually, looks as a block to the downhill side. And if we keep it on the upfield side, it's going to further deter him from going across the top of the goal. If the offensive player is really committed to getting over the top of the goal, there's usually not much you can do as a short stick to stop him. But what you can do is make it a long drawn out process. So if I'm in my correct position here, shoulders to the sideline, and he's really fighting to get over the top, I'll step up, block him here. He might have to go further and further upfield, but as he does, he'll be further and further away from the plays and the games. And then as he crosses over that center line of the field, right, because there's not much I can do to really stop him. But once he crosses over, I will then switch to playing him on the far side of the goal and try to keep him on that side. After I force the ball carrier to actually go down the alley, my positioning should change somewhat. So I'll be here, set up, I'll stop him from going over the top, and he'll actually dodge down the alley. As he does make his move on his dodge, I'm going to want to, if I can, maybe give him a push or a shove or something to get him off balance to throw off his dodge a little bit. Now as he moves down the sideline, I'm going to actually shift my positioning to where I don't want to be in front of him still, right? At first you have to be a little bit uh, in front of him, between him and the goal, but as he dodges down the sideline, you're going to actually shift so that you're just slightly behind him. I like to call it that you're sort of riding in his back hip pocket because your hips are going to be right behind his hips. You're going to have your stick in that uphill position on his back right here, pushing on his hips, right? That's the really the fulcrum or the lever point that gives you a lot of power as a defensive player. Pushing on his shoulder, he's going to be able to lean into that a lot, but if you push on his hip, he's going to have to give with that pressure. So as he dodges down, you'll be riding him here on the hip, pushing, and make sure you're trying to force him down that alley. 
Now, as far as checking goes, you are allowed to throw checks, but the most important part of being a defensive midfielder is your positioning and the positioning of the offensive player on the field. So really you want to control him to where he goes off the field. Uh, throwing checks is a bonus, but if you're trying to throw checks here, you might get yourself out of position. Same if you're trying to throw checks on the back, you get yourself out of position. Uh, so the main point is, and you'll, you'll pretty much be fine if you just ride his hips, push him to the bottom corner away from the goal, and then as he passes the ball away, you've done your job, right? Just control him, try to remove it remove him as a threat and not get beat. Let the long poles on your team actually take the ball away. All right. I think we're good. Sweet. <coughs> Unless there's anything else you want to go over. Jenga. This is an HD, remember. Oh. Taking away our camera angles. We don't need any angles. <laughs> it's definitely been more than 20 minutes. It's like, it's like 1245.